to a Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and I'm very glad you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting, and more than interesting, an incredibly important show with the author of Seeds of Deception and Genetic Roulette, Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey is also the executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology and is really one of the leading voices internationally in the subject of genetically modified foods and organisms. He comes with a wealth of information, both on the level of health and the effects that have been proven to be deleterious for human health, and certainly if you're a rat, you don't want to eat GMO foods, and uh, the whole political landscape and the way our governments, really all governments, are being influenced very profoundly by the heavy hand of corporate power. And it's really important for us all to really get what Jeffrey has to share with us so we can get some leverage in this world where our food is really being jeopardized. So Jeffrey, great to have you on the show. Thank you, Mitchell. Absolutely. How did you get into this in the first place? What motivated you to even look into this subject? And what's the problem with GMO food anyway? All in together. Okay. Well, that, that's what I all learned at one point. I learned that there's a problem with GMOs. They were about to be introduced in 1996, and no one was doing anything about it. Um, it was a molecular biologist who was giving the lecture, and he was aware of the subtle changes that could occur at the DNA when you just force genes from one species into the DNA of another species, how it can create massive collateral damage, change all sorts of functioning, uh, destroy sequences that we don't even understand the importance of, and that at the same time we were doing this, it wasn't just in the laboratory, which would have been fine, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but it was being released into the environment so that it could cross-pollinate with other species or other, other non-GM crops, and then perpetuate contaminating the gene pool for longer than the effects of global warming and nuclear waste. And at the same time, mm. it was being put into the food supply, so That's every a single powerful person, statement. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we're talking about exposing the products of an infant science to the entire population and putting it into the environment where we have no technology to recall it. And so, into I the environment and into the food super, uh, supermarket marketplace. Exactly, exactly. So we were playing with a level of, of danger and risk that had never before been broached, and it was being done with little care. And as I, as I started to investigate, it was done by ignoring the science and ignoring the scientists and the warnings. Mm, I see. That's awful. Yeah. That's awful. So basically, it was a political maneuver that allowed this to happen, i.e. be released into the environment. Precisely, and we actually track the mechanics of that politicians, of that other political maneuverings. Um, we have the first Bush administration telling the FDA promote biotechnology. Mm -hmm. And so Dan Quayle was running the Council of Competitiveness and said GMOs will increase U.S. exports and therefore no regulation. So the FDA had a, had a policy of no regulation, no approvals, and the way they created that policy is they created a new position for Michael Taylor, who was Monsanto's former attorney. Monsanto, of course, is the big biotech company. He came in, created this, or oversaw the creation of a policy that said, we're not aware of any information showing that GMOs are significantly different, therefore no testing is necessary. Different than the rest of other food. Right, exactly. So they said no testing, no labeling. You don't even have to tell the FDA if you want to introduce a GMO. Now, but before, before oh. we get off of Michael Taylor, yeah. I've got to tell you, Michael Taylor then became Monsanto's vice president, and he's now Obama's U.S. food safety czar. And the sentence in the policy that was the basis for this hands-off approach was a lie. It turns out that the overwhelming consensus among the scientists at the FDA were that GMOs were different and dangerous and should require long-term study. But the, set, but the policy said, we're not aware of any information showing that the foods are different. So that's just a blatant lie, not even an omission, but a... Total lie. We know because 44,000 secret FDA documents were made public from a lawsuit seven years later, and it showed that it was a complete ficti uh, fictitious statement. So on that basis, is Michael Taylor uh, prosecutable? No, he's amazingly uh, Teflon-like. Uh -huh. You can't find... Oh, so he used to work for DuPont also. <laughs> I think so. It's amazing how little his uh, signature appears in incriminating paper trails. He really knows his stuff. 
I think he's probably responsible for more food-related illnesses and deaths than anyone in human history, which makes his current appointment as the food safety czar that much more shocking.